17th, June 17th. Uh, let's do that again. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. So this is official. This is Bristol Township Council meeting, June 17th, 2021. Uh, starting, we're a little late to the, tonight. Starting time is 729. Uh, we need a uh, call to order, please. And if, let me just hold on here. Will we got anything? Okay, uh, could you uh, call to order? First thing, could we uh, stand for a Pledge of Allegiance, please? One second, and a moment of silence af afterwards, just for a moment, for all our service personnel overseas fighting for our country and our women, men and women in blue that protect us every day. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and for the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individuals and liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. President Bowen. Here. Vice President Murphy. Present. Mr. Antonello. Here. Mr. Blaylock. Here. Mr. Glasson. Here. Mr. Monahan. Mrs. Wagner. Present. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, started the meeting, we met an executive session. Scott, would you elaborate? Yes, uh, the Bristol Township Council met on uh, Section 5 to this meeting where matters of township real estate as well as township personnel issues were discussed. Thank you. Uh, public comments will be on general and general items will be taken at this time. If you have questions and cannot attend the Zoom meeting, you may email your questions to J Mayor. J M A I E R at bristoltownship.org. Again, if you uh, would like to email your questions, please go to J M A I E R at bristoltownship.org prior and during this meeting. Monthly reports are available for review in the township manager's office. Public comments will be taken on land development and official action items. General comments will be taken during an opportunity for residents to address council. And next on the agenda is public pre presentation, Bristol Riverside Theater, Concerts in the Park. Introduction by Jessica Fox, Director of Parks and Recreation. Jessica, are you there? I am here, sir. Oh, there you are. Hey, Jess, good to see you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so first of all, thank you guys for allowing us to be here today to talk a little bit about the summer concert series and also other things that are going on in Parks and Rec. Um, at the height of the pandemic, the Bristol Riverside Theater came to us with a great idea to take their summer concert series and bring it outside into Bristol Township. Um, so out of that idea and months of planning and hard work, and of course the support of Ms. Elton and council, um, the summer concert series was born. So we have Ken here tonight and he's gonna talk a little bit about that, about the um, summer music fest. Thanks Jess, hi everybody, thanks. Uh for having me, it's really nice to be with you. My name is Ken Kaysar. I'm one of the producing directors at the Bristol Riverside Theater. And before I talk about this series, I just want to, you know, congratulate you all on a wonderful park. It's it's just beautiful, so well designed, and I think I'm sure a great addition to your residents. So um, I'm really, we're really proud to be part of it and to bring our programming to your park. But I think you've done a wonderful job. The the Splash Park is incredible. I'm there during the day and I see kids playing in it. And uh, we watched soccer happening last week before our concert. And then we had a wonderful concert. So the whole park just seems wonderful. So congratulations to you all on that. Um, we're honored to be part of your park with the, 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 uh, with the uh, summer concert series. Um, we opened last week with Take Six on Saturday night. We had a great uh, turnout and a great concert. And we have five more wonderful concerts happening all summer long. Our next one is this weekend. Starting tomorrow night, we have Broadway Memories, which is a concert of all the great songs of Broadway from the golden era. We've got a lot of uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, a lot of uh, uh, Candor and Ebb, a lot of the great uh, classic musicals, The Music Man and all of that good stuff. 
Um, that'll play all weekend. And then in July, our July month is kind of our decades month. We have totally awesome 80s on July 16th through the 18th, which is a sort of a concert of the great 80s songs. If you're a big 80s fan, this is for you. And if you're not, it might have some cringe worthy moments for you. So either way, it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, we encourage you to come out. Um, at the end of that month, on July 30th and 31st, we have 70s Flashback. They're a wonderful band that cover all the great songs of the 70s. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and then in August, we have another Broadway concert, August 13th and 15th, um, led by Keith Baker and the BRT Concert Band. It's called Broadway Ahead, and it features all the wonderful songs of uh, Broadway shows that were on Broadway when COVID hit, and sort of a taste of all the great songs and musicals that are going to come back to Broadway, uh, you know, in September when the pandemic is over. And then at the end of August, we have a great uh, band called the Duat Project. Um, they sing duat music. Who doesn't love duat music? It's going to be a great way to end the summer um, on August 27th and 28th. So we hope you'll all come out. We have made tickets available for Bristol Township residents for only $10. So it's a, it's a real bargain. It's a wonderful way to spend an evening. Feel free to bring food out with you, your picnic baskets or whatever. Um, we'll, we, we, we will have some food trucks there and a concession stand. So you can also purchase some snacks. Um, but you can just come out, lay down your chair, kick your shoes off, enjoy the summer under the stars and listen to some wonderful music. So it's gonna be a great summer end. It's only the beginning. We plan to be back with you guys next year and we're already working on the programming for that as well. Um, and we're excited about uh, having a bigger capacity, which allows us to bring even bigger acts and, and uh, even higher profile sort of uh, offerings. So we're really looking forward to it. And this partnership with you is gonna be wonderful. It's already sort of been tremendous. Working with Jessica has been amazing. So thank you so much for having us and hosting us. And uh, we look forward to offering you many great nights of entertainment ahead. Thanks, Ken. That's, that's great. Hey, Ken, and, and you mentioned um, 10 o'clock, um, 10 o'clock, $10 tickets for Bristol Township residents. Do they go on to the Bristol Riverside Theater website or is that something we get on the Bristol Township? And I see Jess not in an O and yes. So. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, Thank you. So Thank you. The, they are, um, the, they're $11 tickets and they're available at the um, tax and sewer window at the municipal complex between nine and four. And um, you can come and see our staff at the tax and sewer window and they'll be happy to process that for you. It is cash only for those tickets. So bring your cash up, you'll get your tickets in hand. Um, and again, that's during business hours at the tax and sewer window. That's really tremendous. And Thank you for doing that. don't forget to bring that. proof of residency too. Sorry. Okay. Okay, thanks Jess. And thanks Ken. Thank that was a, hey, real uh, quick. Um, you don't have to be a resident of Bristol Township to attend, do you? No, no, no. No, of course not. No. no uh, just, if you're not, uh, just to get the discounted uh, resident rate. Yeah. What is the full rate without being a resident? Uh, uh, it, yeah. Go I'm ahead. sorry, I'll, I'll take it for you. <laughs> sure. uh, it you. could be um, right now, since it was limited to um, a, a COVID protocol, and so it was a maximum, before, it was all planned out before uh, the restrictions were lifted. So it was a maximum of 1,000 people. So the ticket prices uh, right now are $55 for non-residents. Um, I'm sure next year when when the um, the time frame is, is, you know, the there's no COVID and, and maximum capacity is 5,500. Uh, those tickets um, for, you know, we'll still give a discounted ticket for residents, but there'll be a, a less of a price for non-residents as well. All right. Sorry, if I could just okay. clear up, can yes. I just clear up one thing? Um, yes, if you don't mind, the, the tickets for take six were $55 because that's a sort of a higher profile act, but our other concerts are, many of them are a lot cheaper. So they're anywhere from $30 to $45. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Concert. Yeah, no worries. Just don't want anybody to panic when they heard fifty-five dollars. Yeah, no, I got my tickets for thirty-five dollars for tomorrow night, and I see if you act now, they have a twenty-five percent discount um, if you want to go for this weekend. So keep yeah. it. Check the website. Check the Bristol Riverside Theater if you're outside of our community. You can get them for a discount right now. And and again, yeah. what what is this weekend show? One more time. 
Broadway memories. It's Broadway uh, songs from the golden era of Broadway. All your favorite old Broadway musicals will be there. Music Man and uh, South Pacific and Sound of Music and a lot of great stuff. Music Man. I played that role in high school. Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Gotta go, Pat. Gotta go. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Thank thanks, Je- thanks, Kent. Thanks, Jessica. Is there any uh, anything else, Jessica? She's on the agenda next. Yep. You want to just roll right into it, Jess? On the agenda? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, I did. And are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. There I go. I didn't see the. <laughs> My, okay. my microphone was a little messed up. Okay, so Randy's gonna, um, while Randy's putting up the slideshow, um, one of the really cool things last weekend, we had a group of young gentlemen here from the Midwest that were here to see Take Six. They had, they saw that they were coming to Bristol Township and came all the way from, some of them were from Ohio and some from Chicago uh, to, to our amphitheater to see Take Six. So that was a really cool, cool moment for our first concert we've ever had out there. Wow, how about that? Okay, so um, we'll hop right into our first slide. So I wanted to come here today to talk to you a little bit about um, what we have going on in Parks and Rec, what we've been working on and what may be coming up in the future. So to start, um, I just wanted to go over some general info about our park system, um, all of the different amenities that we have and things like that. So the first thing is that there, we have 32 parks and 27 playgrounds. So there's a lot of park space in the township. And most of those park spaces have similar rules. Of course, there are different rules that apply to different amenities and different parks. But one of the major things that we've noticed lately is that we have a lot of dogs off leashes. Remember, kids are getting back outside now playing with their friends. Let's make a safe environment, make sure our dogs are on lead. Um, Same thing with our parks are all non-smoking, which is an ordinance that you guys passed last year. And we were really excited about that. So remember to follow your posted signage, stay off playgrounds, in outside of the dawn to dusk area and make sure your dogs are are taken care of throughout the park and always on a leash. Um, and then we wanna talk a little bit about our municipal park. So this is our, full, our first full summer of operation and we're really excited about it. We have a lot going on between the playground and the spray park and the turf field and the amphitheater. Um, so the one thing um, that has been a major question for everyone lately has been the spray park. Um, We are operational and we're really excited about it. It's going really well. Um, However, there are a few parts that we're waiting on um, with things being on back order with uh, the pandemic. So we are open right now from 10 to 4 on Monday to Friday and 10 to 2 on Saturday, assuming that there are no maintenance issues. As soon as we get through some of these repairs that we need to make where it can be operational without an attendant, we will start to expand those hours a little bit. So right now we're just in those hours to make sure that it's safe and operational through the day until we can get some of our parts in that we need, specifically the pedal activator, um, which is the big one that we need to get in before we can extend hours. Um, Also, our synthetic turf field, um, it is permit only. Um, So if you're looking for a turf field permit, give us a call. Our practice field is coming along very nicely and we hope to have that open for public use by the end of August. Um, And then of course we have all of our neighborhood parks. Um, In in all of your neighborhoods, there's a park nearby that's within walking distance. Um, Those are generally playgrounds, basketball courts, things like that. If you have any issues with lighting on the basketball courts or playground damage you'd like to report, make sure you're just reaching out to us with that information and we'll get on it. So now we're going to talk about programs real quick. We have some cool stuff going on. Summer camp starts on Monday. We have 120 kids. Our staff is ready to go. And we're really excited to have our first full summer camp in the new park. Um, We also have baton twirlers finishing up. That's one of our favorite programs. It's been going on for quite a long time. And then we have our our brand new program, which is our GG Leagues Esports. And that is bringing kids together in a safe online environment to um, compete in different video games. And they do that from their homes. And then we're gonna have some in-person activities to bring kids with like interests together. Um, And then of course we have more programs coming all the time. So uh, we're gonna finish up here with special events. We just talked about the concert series, which is awesome. And we're so excited about that. Um, That's probably our biggest program we've had so far. And then um, National Night Out, we are bringing that back this year on August 3rd. And that'll run from six to eight. It's a Tuesday night. 
all of our police officers and emergency officials will be out there. We're going to have um, bounce houses, games, fun things like that. And I hear there's going to be some cops in the dunk tank. So um, you'll want to come out for that event for sure. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll have our township manager in the dunk tank as well. Um, and then we are bringing back fall festival in September, and that is going to be combined with our grand opening event that we couldn't have last year. So that is going to be our big blowout event of the year. We're really excited about it. Um, make sure you save the date for our fall festival on Saturday, September 11th with a Sunday rain date. Um, and then we're going to go back into holiday season and do what we've always done. So holiday parades, holiday tree lightings, only we're going to do them bigger and better. And our holiday tree lighting is going to take place in our new park which we're really excited about. It's gonna be a brand new event. We're taking an old event and we're making it new in our new space. So um, I really hope that, well, obviously we'll see all of you out there, but I hope that everyone that's watching this right now saves the date for those events and comes out and visits with us. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Great job, Jessica. Yes. Um, and then really if you good. need any information, contact information for the uh, Parks and Rec Department, just hop onto our Bristol Township Parks and Recreation Facebook page, and you can find anything you need and you can reach us there. Great. Jessica, I just want to um, say that what a phenomenal job you're doing. It's beyond, I can't even articulate. It's just incredible what you put together. It's just, I don't think the residents really realize what they have. Um, Thank you. It takes a strong council and a strong supportive manager to make all those things happen. So really, yeah, I appreciate you know. everything that you guys do. But you're leading the way. You're so thank you boss. for everything you're doing. And we'll keep working hard and making things bigger and better all the time. Cool. Thank yeah, you. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. Okay, we're going to move on to a public hearing and ordinance. We have an ordinance amending chapter 205, section 205-11, eight. H, that's 205-118H, zoning of the code of Bristol Township related to off-street parking regulations, consideration and take appropriate action. Randy Elton. Uh, thank you, President Bowen. Um, this is the last part of the off-street parking regulations that we were working on last month and for the months prior. Uh, this is just the part that was in our zoning ordinance that um, that the others were in the, uh, the um, maintenance code or the traffic code. Uh, when it's in a zoning ordinance, it needs to have 30-day um, notice and get responded, uh, get sent to and reviewed by Bucks County Planning Commission. So that has occurred. Uh, this is again, um, just amending saying that you can no longer park um, on, you can, well, it's never been permitted to park on a lawn, but now you can park on a, on your property by um, adding an additional driveway uh, that can be made up of uh, stone. Uh, it doesn't have to be asphalt, all weather paved anymore, or it can just be of the stone at the wheelbase. So uh, we're trying to assist everybody. I know it, back in February um, during the snowstorms, um, you know, we had asked people to help out with the snowstorms, get the cars off the road. Uh, then, you know, notice of violations were sent out to the property owners. Um, I halted all those notices of violations. In May, our building and planning department sent out notices to um, all of the property owners that uh, had originally received the notice of violation, advising them of um, what these new ordinances were, were going to be. We passed them last month and um, they they have you know 30 days to get the uh the permits for the for the new areas and if not then citations will be issued so some citations were issued because um they were all the properties were rechecked from february and they were still in that same condition we are working with people um still that if they received a citation and they um they hadn't moved their car, but they can easily just move their car now. We will withdraw the citation, um, just reach out to the building and planning department. Um, the whole point is, um, you know, not to have people parking vehicles, um, motor vehicles, recreational vehicles on the on their lawn. Um, it, you know, we, we get a lot of complaints of that. So rather than the expense of adding in a new driveway, um, for asphalt, we do allow the, the gravel. And then the whole point was also to get, which we passed the ordinance last month, was to get the recreational vehicles off the street. Um, so that causes safety issues with emergency vehicles having to go down as well as site distance issues at either driveways. 
So, um, so that's why we allowed this um, inexpensive or less expensive way to add an additional driveway in areas that you weren't allowed to have before. I know that was a long-winded, but I was trying to explain. Oh, it was good to explain that. Thank you. Yeah. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Pat Antonello. Right, hang on. I'll second. Second. Was that Cindy Murphy? It was. Okay, Cindy. Second by Cindy Murphy. On that motion, is there anybody has any questions on it? Really? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, anyone opposed? Thank you. Next uh, on the agenda is an ordinance amending chapter 205 of the zoning of the code of the township of Bristol related to the residential accessory uses and structures. Randy Elton. Uh, thank you again. Uh, yep. this, this is um, an existing um, ordinance that we have, uh, residential accessory, accessory uses and structures, uh, mother-in-law suites, uh, something of that nature. Right now, it is uh, required to be um, a conditional use that gets presented in front of council uh, with that criteria. We are removing that from that uh, requirement and putting it into the zoning ordinance and going through, an, uh, it would have to be a zoning hearing board appeal. Um, and that is the only change. Moving it from council discretion to zoning hearing board um, uh, meetings. I'll make that motion. Motion by Patrick Antonello. I'll second it, Craig. Second by Joe Glasson. Hi, Joe. Hi, Craig. On the motion, is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next, we have an ordinance amending chapter 118, hotels and motels of the code of the township of Bristol related to the keeping of registration books for occupants. Randy Elton, you want to highlight what the what this mm -hmm. one's about? Sure. Um, so this one is, uh, we've had some issues with some um, motels um, with um, just with the, um, the, the general population that is uh, going to the motels, whether they're staying there or not. Uh, we've, reached out, we've reached out to our counterparts. Oh. I mute you, Miss Egan. We've reached out to our counterparts um, and in different municipalities. And one of the things that has um, benefited um, getting the type of uh, population that is not welcomed in these hotels is a hotel registry. And that is what we are suggesting and recommending um, that the, that the um, it, I mean, it, it technically is, not technically, it actually is a um, state law, but uh, the state troopers don't have time to come down to each motel and check that this is going on. So it's giving jurisdiction to our local police office, our police department to be able to um, ask for the registration book to make sure that the, the occupants are the, are the ones that are lodging in the facilities and that there's no um, criminal activity going on. I will make that motion. Second that one. Motion by Cindy Murphy, second by Mary M. Wagner on the motion. Is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next, we have an ordinance amending chapter 144-4, license applications, licenses, and transferable of the Code of Township Bristol related to the instruments of permits for door-to-door -door solicitation. Consideration to take appropriate action. Randy Elton. Uh, Scott's going to handle again. it. He came to the solicitor's office. Yes, uh, yeah, I'll take this. so um, early last month, early in May, uh, we uh, had some communication with another law firm who represents uh, different types of sales companies, door-to-door -door service projects. And they just noticed that um, some of the provisions in our ordinance regarding door-to-door -door solicitation were out of date with the current case law and how things have developed. And it made sense, the ordinance was from I believe 1992 was the last time it was updated. So we're talking 30 years of case law has changed. There's been some you know, recent developments within Pennsylvania courts as well as the federal courts. And these changes just um, reference those. The changes of significance were, um, we had something in here about a discretionary fingerprinting of applicants. We took that out, we didn't use it anyway, so that wasn't an issue. Um, 
the time limits. There was a court case from the Third Circuit Court of Appeals that said what the time limit should be, so we're in conformity with that. And the last one is we put down the exact structure of how the uh, offices of licensing inspection and zoning reviews these and issues them so that no one can be surprised about why they got turned down or what the process is for uh, approval of these license applications. So the idea here is we're getting in conformance with the uh, current current case law as the federal courts have handed down. Okay. Is there any- I'll make that motion. Motion by Marianne Wagner. I'll second. Second by Cindy Murphy. Is there any questions on this motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving right along, we have the consent agenda. We have consider approval of a voucher list and requisition dated June 17, 2021, an amount of $2 million, $2,085,533.25. Consider approval of May 20, 2021 council meeting minutes, appointment of special fire police for Levittown Fire Company number two, Brock Valentine and Donna Amiral. I hope I said that right, Amiral. Uh, mm -hmm. We need uh, we need a I'll motion. Make the, I'll make the motion to uh, the consent agenda items. Okay, we have a motion by Miriam Wagner. I'll second. I'll second. Is that Ray Blaylock? <laughs> Ray Blaylock. <laughs> and we have a second by Ray Blaylock on the motion for the consent agenda. Is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Next, we have a report from Township Manager. Uh, thank you, President Bowen. Uh, there's been, um, since we had hired uh, several police officers and have um, gotten some on board, so, um, some are going through field training, some are in the academy, but we have been able to uh, make some, um, some adjustments in the police department and move some personnel around. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few. Um, uh, Detective Michael Slaughter um, was promoted to sergeant um, and he will supervise the patrol squad 3A. And Officer Patrick Kitcheman um, was uh, reassigned to acting detec detective in the criminal investigations division. Uh, we've been able to um, expand our narcotics and bite or replace and um, initiate officers in our uh, narcotics and vice enforcement and additionally move some officers into the administrative services of the police department and conducting directed enforcement details and community outreach programs. Uh, these are some of the, um, the components that, and um, additional services that we in the police department that we've been um, lacking uh, because of uh, decrease of manpower with, um, uh, with re retirements and um, people uh, going and drop and people leaving. Uh, so um, it's, it's, been, it's really nice to be able to hire, um, you know, a large uh, amount of good people. We just um, had another civil service test. So uh, we still have a couple more to get on board to bring us back up to uh, what the original full strength was. Um, and we're looking forward to doing that so that we can um, move from a reactive a uh, very busy police department to a proactive um, uh, detail department. Great, thank you. Anything else? That is all I have tonight, thank you. Good, thank you. Report from Township Solicitor. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. We don't have anything to report. We just wanna say that you know Independence Day is right around the corner. So happy 4th of July to everyone. Enjoy your holiday and enjoy that weekend. Uh, thank you, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, next, we have uh, new business. Is there any new business? Yes. The uh, ADA curb ramps. Oop. The ADA curb ramps. Isn't that on the agenda? Yes. Yep. You want ready? Yes. So we have a. Uh, sorry about that. A <laughs> bid to a bid award for 2021 ADA curb ramp program. Consideration to take appropriate action. Um. Rainy out, do you want? I guess there's really not much to say on this, but maybe you can highlight. Sure, we just usually announce who um, we received six public bids um, NJS Concrete LLC, who has been um, 
getting the bids, uh, the low bids uh, over the past couple of years um, was also the low bid in this contract for $462,720,000. Uh, this is uh, the curb ramps that were option two from January, 2020. Uh, that we put on hold. So um, rather than doing a million dollars worth of work a year, we're doing uh, 500,000 because we were anticipating using um, liquid fuels for some stormwater improvements. Right. Okay, great. So I need a motion from council. I'll make, I'll that, make motion. that motion. We have a, a motion by Patrick Antonello and second by Marianne Wagner on a motion. Is there any questions about the curb ramp program? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, thank you. Next, next we have other business. Any other business? Nope, good. Next we have comments from council members. I, I would just like to uh, once again reiterate um, how pleased and how proud we are with the programs uh, uh, that our Parks and Recs people are, are running. I just, it's such a massive undertaking and I just, I'm, yeah. I just, I just sit back and, and I want to congratulate our manager and, and Jessica Fox and her entire team. It just warrants saying again, thanks. That's all I got. Other than happy 4th of July, be safe. Try not to light off too many fireworks because it's making my dog crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a, a phone call today by RNS, Steve Bilocki. Uh, he called, called me right around lunchtime, said, Craig, are you busy? I said, I'm getting ready for lunch. I'll talk to you later. I said, no, what you need, Steve? He said, Craig, I, I was just driving by the spray park. And he said, I just couldn't believe it. He said, I saw it being built. I seen it being built. And um, I would drive by. And he said, today I'm driving. I got a load of concrete. And I look over. The kids are doing the park. He said, and it was hard to fathom that that was gonna happen 10 years ago. And uh, just kudos to everybody, council, the manager, and uh, he didn't know Jessica Fox, but, but that has to go to Jessica Fox too. So that's the only thing I have to say. Anybody else before we move on? I'm good, Greg. Okay, great. Next, we have opportunity for residents to address council, public comment on general agenda items will be taken at this time. If you have any questions and cannot attend the Zoom meeting, you may email your questions to jmaier at bristoltownship.org prior and during this meeting. Is there any residents that are Zoomed in here tonight? Yes, I am. Diane Wright. Okay, great. How are you doing, Diane? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Good. It's nice to see everyone. Yes. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak speak with you. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Wright, I just need to um, interrupt for one second. The protocol is to say your name and address. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Sorry. I know that. Diane Wright, 2 Rocky Pool Lane, Levittown, Pennsylvania, Bristol Township. Thank you, sorry. Is that enough? Okay. Uh, again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. My neighbors and I are requesting to table um, the most recent approval at the zoning meet meeting to make the two temporary mobile units permanent at the, um, I want to call it the Red Cross, the um, homeless shelter at Five Points in Levittown. Um, my family and I and my husband's family have resided in Bristol Township since before 1950. We purchased our home in 1972 and have lived here ever since. We've raised two kids here. We've watched a lot of changes in Bristol Township. It's truly in a period of revitalization, which I really attribute some of that to the council and to the people moving into the community. Um, my husband's business is also in Bristol Township. I am a registered nurse with an extensive background in healthcare. I have a bachelor's in business, a master's in nursing. I am certified by the highest nurses credentialing association, the American Nurses Credentialing Center in adult health and also a pediatric nurse specialist. Um, varied experience. I've been active in this community and in other communities as a volunteer and have actually received um, citations from the city of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania Senate for my volunteer activities. Um, 
this variance that was approved for this shelter may be appropriate. I certainly could see during COVID, although when they got the temporary um, permit to have this variance, they did not have one COVID patient in, uh, or patient resident in the center, but those um, places were placed there. Um, and I just happened to see the signs as I was walking along the back path between the tech school and the library. Uh, and I walked there three to four times a week and had never seen it. And I saw this yellow flapping and I went over and opened it and I saw that they were making this a request to add two uh -huh. residential units to um, the homeless shelter. Um, there's multiple issues around this um, um, homeless shelter. Uh, having been a resident of this community, I have I can tell you personally, we have had people go from the homeless shelter into my husband's business demanding free services. I have had people from the homeless shelter who were shut out because they missed the curfew appear in my children, the playhouse I have for my grandchildren and open the door and find someone sleeping in it. I see multiple needles, beer cans, alcohol bottles. Um, the representative from the homeless shelter said they did, they do have issues. And uh, when someone has alcohol or drug abuse problems, they send them out. I know pretty much where they're going once they've established their home base here in Bristol Township. They move into the woods and the woods is filled with homeless right now. Of course, they're gonna go somewhere, but if you bring them here, they're gonna stay there. These mobile residential units are basically mobile homes. I have a sister that has mobile home that does not look as big as these two units behind this homeless shelter. If this is more than just an issue of a variance of encroaching 15 feet within 15 feet of property line, this is permanent and um, during the Zoom meeting or during the council meeting, um, she stated that this is not supposed to expand the services, bring more residents. However, she also mentioned that if the county sends them to them, they have to take them. Um, I really truly and my neighbors as tax paying long-term residents and new residents moving in this community feel that this needs to be looked at for a true reverse adverse impact study. This is more than just putting buildings up. This is changing the landscape of a community that is growing. It's going to affect, it could affect businesses. It could affect the price of our homes. Um, they're skyrocketing right now in this area People are moving into the city. I, as I walk five, six miles a day, I talk to these new neighbors. They've left Philadelphia. They've left New York. They're coming here because they see this as a growing, nice community that is welcoming them and is not fraught with the issues that are in the cities. Homelessness is, is, is an issue. I was here when they put these, they started to solicit for this back in 1985. I did not fight it then. I, and I did not protest. Many people did. If you were around at that time, you remember it got pretty ugly. All I could think of is these people need a home. Let's give them a home. What difference does it make? We can help them. There's plenty of us around here that can help them. My mind, my my view of this has changed significantly as it has impacted on my life. I would not let my children walk from my home in Red Cedar Hill to Neil Armstrong Middle School because of what was going on in the homeless shelter and the people coming out. This is, we have to have an impact study. How many of these kids are gonna to go to our schools? How many of these, what is gonna to happen to our tax base based on this growth? Is there truly a residential limit in this center? They can say in the meeting that it's, we're not planning on expanding services,
But at the same time, when you say to me, if the county says we have to take them, it's a county property, we have to take them. So I don't see a real limit. I truly feel that we- We miss rights, we, we have a five minute timeline. Okay, all, all right. right. Well, we, the residents of our, seek a reasonable time frame to ask and resolve questions regarding this concerning our greatest investment, our homes and our children's. Please. So Diane, Diane, what you want to do, you want to, you want to, you want to squish this. You don't want it to go forward, correct? Correct. All right, Scott, are you there? The township attorney, Scott? Yes, I'm here. All right, so the zoning board approved it. Everything was advertised as what I did my homework. All the protocols were filed, was advertised in the paper and the zoning board approved it. Yeah, that's correct. All the zonings are done. This is done by the zoning hearing board. It doesn't come back to the township council for review. The zoning right. hearing board is a yeah. quasi judicial body that has its own right. protocol. So, so if she wasn't happy with, if neighbors are not happy with that decision, they would have to file a petition up at Common Police Court. I'm assuming. Yeah, that's correct. Um, there's certain requirements for that, so I can't. Right, because I remember just. A, do, but there's oh, a way you can appeal to the court to the courthouse. That's correct. You have to appeal it to the common police police court. That is correct. Yes. Because uh, I remember when there was a uh, Pines Tavern down in Bristol Borough, they wanted to put outside seating. The zoning board approved it, and the residents were not happy. They went to common police court and got it squashed. One resident in that case. Yeah, that's correct. But that's what they did. Yeah. Um, so I'm just using that as a uh, example of, of how it, it works. We have to. Yeah. We don't. We don't have the power to kill it. Is what I'm trying to get at. They would. She would have to hire an attorney, or the group would have to hire an attorney and go to common that's not, court. That's not coming back in front of council. That particular. No. no it's, it's, right. Correct. That's what I thought. Right. Yep. That's what I'm, my point was. It's out of our hands. We can't kill it. Um, if they're not happy with the zoning board decision, it's got to go to Commons Police Court. Diane, do you understand that, Diane? I understand it. Um, yeah, I'm it's very out of our hands. Because it's Bristol Township Zoning Board. It doesn't make sense. The well, whole posting it. didn't make sense. It wasn't really public. They're, they said I got it. And if, you're not, if you're not happy with that, you can file. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Mm -hmm. So th thank you, Diane. I'm sorry you're disappointed. We try and do everything we can for the residents. I know the, you do. Just some this, things that are not. This, this was snuck in on us. This should not have happened this way. Okay. Posting on Memorial Day, posting on the, the agenda on the day of the meeting, this is all wrong, all wrong. And our township is too good for this, to have this snuck on, on into us like this. This is back to our slam. Can can uh, can uh, can I ask the manager? I don't I don't perceive that this was snuck in in any way, shape, or form. Was this appropriately advertised? Yes, it's advertised in the paper as required by the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, as well as notices to the affected neighbors. Uh, as per the Pennsylvania Municipality Planning Code, it's 500 feet on the same street, 150 feet to the rear. Uh, that is uh, an affidavit that the applicant brings forth to the zoning hearing board that night. Um, certified letters saying that, that they sent out the required notices um, and the property is posted. Um, I believe it's a minimum of, uh, I, I don't recall, but the property has to be posted and, um, it, and, and we put it on our website and on our Facebook page. And I understand. And with the newspaper advertising, um, they beat us up pretty good. They charge a lot of money for that advertising. It's uh, one of the ways the newspapers uh, are trying to recoup lost revenue from subscribers. Nevertheless, and Diane, I understand uh, your consternation about this issue, but what I really think it's important for us to point out that uh, using the term snuck in is really not appropriate. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the fact that you were not quite aware of it at, at, uh, as early as you would have liked uh, still doesn't, it, you know, the fact of the matter is there was no sneaking here. Um, it's oh, the way we do everything when we advertise. It, let, it's let the way it's always done. I'm sorry so, if that was offensive. I just wanted to, to address that. I, yeah, don't, well, I don't want to offend anyone. Um, mm -hmm. I pay I attention it. to what's going on and I walk by, but I can tell you that the neighbors that they notified 
They stated they notified the EMS, the library, mm -hmm. and the technical school. There is a dental office, there is a dance studio, and there is a veterinarian office is all right there. And it's five, it's a, it's it's on a linear feet basis, 500 feet on the same street. So that would be on New Falls Road or Library Way. Um, and um, and 150 feet to the rear, which would have been the, the rescue squad and the, maybe the technical school. So, um, you know, they did the minimum requirement or our solicitor wouldn't have accepted the application. All right. I believe the dental office extends closer to- Well, again, Diane- if, Okay, if, I know, the court of appeals. Yes, all right, common please. Yeah. And you get the neighbors together and you can pony up and yes. this is the way to stop it. So uh, I'm sorry, Bob, we can't give you a better uh, results that you're looking for, but we do need to move on to see if anybody else is on the Zoom meeting that needs to, uh, has a comment or wants to speak about something. Thank is you there, for your time. Thank you, Diane. Is thank there anybody you, Diane. else? Is there any, anybody else on the Zoom meeting that uh, needs to, some help with the township or has an issue? I see there's no one. So on that note, we're going to adjourn the meeting. I need a motion from somebody to adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Patrick Antonello. Thank you. Second by Ray Blaylock. We're going to adjourn this meeting at 816. All in favor? Aye. 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 Happy 4th of July. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.